Hi, I'm Ben Secret. I'm a retoucher and designer from London. And this month we're kicking off the first in a three-part series where I'm going to be walking you through a standard retouching workflow. The image I'm using is a job I've just done for Amplified Clothing, photographed by Ruth Rose. And this process is going to be broken down into three sections. Skin work, creating a look, and sharpening preparing an image for print or the web. So first up is skin work, and this is a simple approach I use on about 90% of the images I do. So first up we're going to duplicate our source image with Command J if you're on a Mac or Control J if you're on a PC. So the first tool we're going to select is the healing brush. And we're just going to go over any blemishes or stray hairs which we can easily fix at this stage. So I tend to zoom in quite close using a small soft brush. And you use a healing brush by option clicking or alt clicking on smooth areas of skin and brushing over areas you want to smooth. And it's quite a clever tool, so 9 times out of 10 it will act as you expect it to. But every now and then it does things slightly unexpected, so you have to be ready to undo. It's generally best if the area you're sampling from is a similar tone and texture to the area you're painting over. So I'm just going over any slight bumps in the skin. And sometimes we can use this on stray hairs too. And this is one job that's definitely made easier with a graphics tablet. And here we're just going over some stray hairs. And because we're quite close to a strong shadow region, there's always a chance the healing brush is going to give us slightly dark results. And if this is ever a problem, this is where we'd probably switch to the clone stamp tool. Just take a straight sample from a nearby area. And it doesn't matter if we're a bit rough here, because the next process we're going to use is going to help blend all this together. And the other tool we're going to use here is the dodge tool. And this helps us lighten shadows. And you can use a healing brush and dodge and burn tools completely non destructively on their own separate layers. But I prefer to use them together on a copy of the actual image because that way they can interact a bit more. So I can switch between the healing brush and the dodge tool just to help me with any problem areas. And with dodge, use a very light brush on about 2% flow. And I mainly use this to lighten any shadows, like under the eye, and also to soften and smooth the shadows and highlight areas over the skin. And you can use the dodge and burn tools to do what we were doing with the healing brush. And fix skin pores and spots um, with a technique called pixel level dodge and burn. But that does take all day, and I'm not sure there are really any advantages. So a lot of the work with the dodge tool is really contouring. And again, this is made much easier with a graphics tablet. And you probably notice the tool's so soft you can barely see it making a difference. But it's a before and after, and you can just see we softened the face, smooth the shadows, softened the light. And we can just go back to the healing brush and fix anything we need to fix on the body. And I also use the dodge tool to balance the strength of the highlights across the image. So here we're just using it to brighten the arm a bit. And again you don't need to spend hours doing this because the next technique we're going to use is going to soften and bring all this together. And we can also use the burn tool which is like the dodge tool but darkens the image instead of lightens it. And this can just help us smooth in the shadows.
And then you can see the before and after on our basic retouch. And because it looks OK and we're always trying to save memory, I'm going to delete the source image. And anyway, so this has created a duplicate of our retouched image with Control J from the PC or Command J from the Mac. We're going to change the blending mode in the copy of our image to linear light. And we're going to turn its opacity down to 50%. Now we're going to select an inverse adjustment layer and clip it onto our duplicate image by alt clicking in between them in the layers palette. And you know if you've done this right because you should get a completely grey screen. And this is every pixel on the top image, cancelling out every pixel on the image beneath it. And this is my smart filter version of the inverted high pass technique. So we're going to convert our duplicate image for smart filters. And then select a high pass filter from our filters menu. And this is going to control how much smoothing we're doing to our image. So you want to find a value where the skin's smooth, but it still has a form and structure in the shadows and highlights. And here we're using between 12 and 13 pixels. And using Gaussian blur in this image, we're going to bring back some of the fine detail. And as a vague rule, the Gaussian blur value should be about a third of the high pass value. So if we did a 12 pixel high pass, we probably want the Gaussian blur around 4 pixels. And what we've done is use the high pass filter to get back all our low details, and the Gaussian blur filter to get back all our high details. So now we've got slightly overly smooth skin with fine detail preserved, but very blurred edges. So next we're going to add a mask to our inverted layer, and then invert the mask with Command I or Control I from the PC. And now we can use a white brush and a mask with a 20 to 30% flow to paint back in where we want the skin smoothing effect. And this will generally be on smooth areas of skin. And we're generally avoiding strong shadow and highlight areas because it will smooth them out too. Um, so I'm avoiding the strong highlight on the nose. But going over shadows we want to blend it on the chin and forehead. And what this will do is just smooth and soften anything we paint over. And there you can see a quick before and after. And the great thing with this technique is we can always go back and change our high pass and gouge and blur values later. And if we find it too smooth, we can also lower the opacity on our inverted layer and basically dial the effect in and out. So that's our basic skin retouch, and next once we're going to be taking this image through the next stage, which is creating a look and style.